Good afternoon ladies and gents and welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for clicking that button and joining me for today's video. I hope you're all well. So ladies and gents, you join me out in the woodland today on a very grey, miserable, foggy, drizzly, cloudy day. But we've come out with one purpose in mind and that is to test the new Winnerwell fast fold titanium stove in medium with stacking pipe. Today we're going to give that its first burn and I've also brought a nice thick, literally this thick, ribeye steak to cook on that stove and I've also brought the smoky hut to see how adequately it warms that tent up. So I found a new location today. We're going to clear some brush. Um, we went over this stove um, two videos ago. If you want to go and check that out, I will leave the link up in here. Um, but just to reiterate, we're going to go over the stove's specifications quickly now and then set about the video. So stay tuned. So as you can see there ladies and gents, the stove is burning away quite happily there and that took zero effort to get going. Um, just for all honesty and openness, I did bring some kiln dried wood, a little bit I had left in the gear room, just to make sure we got that stove off to a good start and we got an even burn all over it. But that is now burning all them horrible uh, volatile oils off there. You want to do this before you actually use this in your shelter. Um, so we've accomplished that step now. We've got heat and a little bit of smoke billowing out the top. Um, we have got the full damper open on the front on the back we are fully closed down because again on the new chimney here we do have lots of um, airflow around that damper the butterfly damper but yeah absolutely fantastic we haven't needed to use gar lines today because there's no wind nor the pegs um, but I will be using that in the tent just to show you we have got the tent set up just at the side of us here so as soon as this has finished this burn we'll take it inside and um, start cooking that delicious steak but yeah absolutely fantastic so far no issues um, and very hot you should be wearing gloves when you're touching this um, the rings they are just like again keychain rings they do get very hot obviously because they're very close to the stove but um, yeah I did bring the gloves just got lazy today so it's my fault but yeah absolutely fantastic the stove is now taking on that awesome blue and purple hue and we've got a nice golden straw colour just setting off at the top of the chimney very very happy so far So now you can see the patination that these stoves are decorated in when they're used for the first time. But please do bear in mind, these stoves do not stay pretty for long and they will warp to some degree through use. Well that is normal and it doesn't affect the functionality of the stove. Maybe just a little bit of the aesthetics. But for now, it looks very, very nice. And still very, very hot.
got a nice dry platform now. Get a bit organised. So I brought the kettle to make a brew. Um, forgot my coffee in true style. And there isn't a nettle to be found in sight. Nor any um, elderberries or blackberry leaves. So we're on hot water. But we can at least do a boil test in the kettle just to see how efficient that is. We brought some nice dry kiln some nice dry kiln dried wood so we shouldn't have an issue and we've got some nice um, pieces of hazel here as well right so let's get the kettle filled at least we'll have some hot water um, to clean the steak pan afterwards So that's going now, can add a bit of wood. Just add a small one at the front. So it has been a while since I've had the smoky up um, from one tigress out now. I think it's been a couple of years in fact. And I did forget just how much room was in the shelter. Um, if you do follow the channel you'll know, or if you follow me on Instagram you, you'll know, we did um, purchase the One Tigress North Gaze canvas hot tent and that was instantly donated to another channel as soon as I tried that on the part for the first time. Um, I did not like that at all and to be honest I don't feel like there was as much room in that as there is this. Could be wrong but um, it might be because there's a lot more light coming through here. But yeah, plenty of room for a chair, a bed, and a small stove like this. So today's steak. We can reach it on the far end of the shelter. This cost me bleeding eight pound fifty, I believe. So um, this better be nice. What this is, the exceptional Aberdeen Angus thick cut eleven ounce ribeye steak. She's very, very thick, as you can see. So this is going in the Jaeger stick panner today. My uh, absolute choice of folding frying pan for bushcraft. All seasoned and ready to go. That should be a lovely fit on top of that stove. And uh, I did pinch a couple of young hogweed shoots coming in. Whether they'll go in, I'll decide later. But uh, the stove is cracking along nicely. And we should be there in no time. We've had a bit of um, drizzle coming down from the clouds. Uh, as you can probably hear there. But we are now undercover, so we should be nice and toasty in here when the stove is ready. Oh, not had this out for a while either. The Messerin knife and uh, steak fork set. So, going to be using this lovely thing today as well to enjoy the steak. I have actually got an onion in my bag. Don't know whether I can be bothered frying it up. Just for the sheer mess that is going to be after eating the steak. Um, but I have brought my spice pack, so maybe a bit of salt and garlic on the steak. Some chilli as well, so we'll add that. But yeah, really happy with this setup now. Um, if you watched the review for this channel you'll see we compared this to its predecessor. The very first folding stove I picked up that cost me over 500 quid at the time. This one is comparable in price maybe a tiny fraction more um, but this is much more compact even though it is a medium stove than its predecessor so it fits much nicer in here. Um, I'll have to get out in this and do a camp soon, I think, with this setup.
bloody old toasty, toasty in here now. The kettle on. So I've decided we are going to have an onion because who doesn't like a lovely fried onion? So let's get dicing and slicing this up. Stove is well underway and it is absolutely toasty in here now. I brought the dragonfly bushcrafter out today. Not had her out for a while. So all this food fodder can go into the stove in a bit. Jack of all trades this knife. Fantastic. Let's get that off there. So it doesn't tarnish my blade. Onion and O1 tool steel. Probably not the best match. We just lost an onion. Video over. Oh, shall we add some garlic to the onions? I think we should. I think that would. Oh, what about some onion powder to the garlic? To the on, onion powder to the onion. Let's have a little bit of this. See if we can't make that powder again. This should season the pan up nicely for the steak. Definitely hot enough there now. We'll off them to one side now. Make room for the steak. That's got to be an inch thick. Oh, some nice pieces of fat in there. And I think we'll add some. Chilean garlic. And a bit of salt. Salt just to bring the flavours out. I don't know why I haven't put any pepper in there. Some garlic. Now, if I remember correctly, I, I did cook with these on a campfire in the fire pit. Um, and chilli flakes an open fire do not mix. Turns into a tear gas and I was definitely crying that day. Let's press that in. And we'll offer that up to the frying pan and do the other side while it's cooking.
<laughs> yeah. Now, as a good friend once told me, you should only ever turn a steak once. So that is what we are going to do today. Um, I am not touching that until I am good and ready, until I start seeing um, some juicy liquid forming on the top, then we'll flip it. But I think we are going to um, enjoy a couple of them onions while they're cooking, looking all lonely in the back. Because I am very hungry. Mm. Absolutely delicious. Let's tidy some mess up. I'm way too quick to let things get out of hand at camp when it comes to mess. I really do need to be more vigilant and uh, proactive. But then I always say you got to break a few omelets to make an egg. No, no you don't. That's stupid. Definitely the other way around. I brought my bleeding, new Stanley and everything. Um, and it was the last thing I remembered walking out the door. And obviously uh, the first thing I forgot, no coffee. That is going to take some cooking. That's an um, inch thick steak. But I do like medium rare. Mmm. I will say as well, ladies and gents, this is by far the best pan I've used for my bushcraft adventures. Absolutely phenomenal pan this. I highly recommend it. It's the Agar Steck Panner from Stabilitherm. Uh, you can add your own handle or you can actually buy it for a few more quid with an attached handle. I don't see the point of that because the one thing that appeals to me about this pan is its packability um, and it's never become too hot where I can't handle that pan anyway and if so you just wear a pair of gloves. But, um, <clears throat> these onions are getting eaten very fast. There's a bit of chilli on them now and that is bloody hot. <sighs> oh. This is the best way I thought we could uh, christen this stove. Steak dinner, onions on top. What else could you want or what more could you want? That's full. Here we go, guys. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Come on. Look at that crust around the edge. <laughs> Mustard gas. Oh. Stray onion. Right, ladies and gents, the table is set. Let's have a look at this steak. Oh yeah. Absolutely perfect. Let's take a bite. Oh, that's one for the stove. Devastating, that was a really crusty part of that as well. There we go. What do you guys reckon? Medium rare. Oh me, oh my. Oh, succulents. To all of my vegan and vegetarian viewers, please accept my sincere apologies. Um, but.
that was definitely worth the £8.50. That is the best steak I have had in a very long time. Oh! I'm just going to keep showing it's this green. Guys, this might become R-rated, unfortunately. Cue the sexy music. So, ladies and gents, steak was absolutely delicious. Um, I polished every ounce of that off. Um, this is the state of the stove after the first use. We've had a pan on there, we've had a kettle on there. As you can see, we've got a bit of oil residue from the base of the pan. And again, nothing to worry about, this is going to happen. No significant warping on the stove body. Again, this happens over time, not on the first use. You can negate, obviously, the oil stains on top of the cooking surface and things like that just by um, using it as a tent heater and boiling water in kettles but again you'd only be using the stove to I'd say 75% of its potential apologies for the screen ladies and gents I can't see whether that's focused or not but as far as efficiency goes with the stove I came out with probably less than a quarter bag of the kiln dried wood the birch uh, just a few chunky bits in there to get the stove going apart from that we had probably two branches of around inch and a half uh, diameter from the dead hazel just behind us and that was sufficient to cook as a steak boil us some water and while the camera was off keeping warm in the tent so i'd say very very efficient we've still got some glowing coals in there as well now um, and that would be easily ignited again just by throwing some dry fuel in and that ladies and gents concludes this video so i have really enjoyed being out in the woods even though we have experienced Pretty rank weather today, um, using the new Winnowell Fast Fold Titanium in medium size. Um, the one thing this stove sorely needed, in my opinion, was that stacking chimney, and Winnowell did deliver. Um, and this stove now excels in the titanium folding stove market with ease. If we take a look at the stove very quickly again in its flat pack state, you'll see just how compact this stove is. And this is going to appeal to someone who is looking for a stove that offers them maximum portability, lightweight and compactness. This stove will definitely not disappoint. The price of the stove is definitely going to be a major factor for most, I totally understand that. But if you're a potential buyer looking for the features that this stove offers you, then this I can highly recommend. Um, again, I've used its predecessor for many years and that didn't disappoint and it's still going strong to this day. So. There we go. So if you are currently in the market searching for your next high quality fast fold titanium hot tent stove, I can wholeheartedly recommend that one. If you are interested in picking this model up for yourself, hit me up, uh, direct message me on my Instagram page, um, Bush Crafty Stee, and I can supply you with a one-off, um, one-time code to get you 10% off that stove. Right, ladies and gents, it's currently raining, as you can probably hear on the mic, and my camera is getting wet. So, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Until the next one, you stay safe, and as always, stay crafty. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.